Have you ever wondered how Formula One helmets are made? Sure, you might know it's made from carbon fiber, but how does it go from this to something that will actually protect your head? Well, there's one place in particular that can really give that answer. And that one place is here in Bahrain. This is Bell Helmets headquarters, and today we're going to be showing you how our helmet is made from start to finish. Bell Helmets was started back in 1954 and have produced some of the most iconic helmets ever seen in the sport. And they are currently used by Lewis Hamilton, Pierre Gasly, Alex Albon, Carlos Sainz, Charles Leclerc, Fernando. Alonso, Esteban Ocon, Nicolas Latifi, George Russell, Kevin Magnussen, Zhou Wan Yu, and Lando Norris. Their headquarters are directly next to the Bahrain circuit and produce 180 units per day and it all begins here in the foam plant and plastic injection department. Here you have these small beads made from EPS and with heat and pressure it can expand into different densities. Imagine it a little bit like making popcorn, heating up some kernels and making it expand. But here they're able to make it softer or harder depending on what section it's being made into. After the beads are expanded into those different densities they are injected into different molds from the foam inserts. These sections being the top, the back, the middle and the mouth guard that sits around the front. Also within here are the injection molds which create the plastic screws around the helmet and any plastic waste from these molds is recycled to go straight back into the process. Also at the headquarters is Zero Noise who do all the electronics going into the Bell helmets. These include things like radio communications and the brand new driver's eye that's been introduced into Formula 1 and originally with Formula E. But now let's create the shell that the foam inserts will go into. So each helmet has about 60 to 100 parts depending on the model. The shell is made from carbon fiber and fiberglass sheeting and here a metal stencil with pressure is added on top and cuts out the correct shapes to make up all the sections of the shell. With all of the stencils cut and packaged together into a kit it is then processed into a composite lamination department. After applying heat proof gel onto the operator's hands the stencils from the kit is then applied onto a heated negative mold. The heat makes it so that the carbon fiber sheet is more workable meaning you can smoothen out any creases while being pushed into the mold. Mold. Once the lamination process is complete, these two molds are then clamped together. Heat and pressure will then cure the resin from the carbon fiber to create a fully hardened shell. Next is onto the trim and drill department. Here is where they'll take the carbon fiber shell and cut off any excess surrounding the bottom or from the eye port where the visor goes. It is then put into a case to make the edges more precise when trimming off all the excess. Whilst in the case, it also has all the holes drilled into the shell, which will become the air vents and the connection points to the visor later in assembly. Once all the trimming and holes are drilled, it's onto the sanding and priming stage. The trimmed edges are sanded down first as the carbon fiber can become very sharp to the touch. But then the whole shell is given a sanding down as well to smooth out any patches of resin that was built up. Here they'll also look for any small holes or bumps which can be covered by filler, which once it's all dried can also be sanded down to blend into the shell. The shells then have a clear coat of primer sprayed across making it ready to have vinyl stickers and paintwork added. Here they will use silk screening printing for the vinyl stickers going onto the helmets and these stickers work similar to water applied tattoos. The painting department also covers specific helmets for drivers where layers of paint is added on and masked off, sanded down and reapplied again. But just before we get onto the final assembly, let's pay some bills and thank today's sponsor, Surfshark VPN. Now one of the officially licensed Formula 1 broadcasters is Service TV in Austria, which means that for anyone who lives there, they get to watch the F1 races for free. However, if we went to go to the website, everything would be geo-blocked and not available. However, by using Surfshark, we can digitally change our location to Austria, therefore we can see all the content there, including watching the live broadcast. But of course it's not just limited to Austria, Surfshark has over 3,000 servers across 65 countries, meaning you can lock even more geoblock programs and services in different countries. And it does all of this whilst encrypting all of your information, keeping your personal data safe from cyber criminals and big companies trying to get data from you. And a great example of this working was when I was back in Bahrain using public Wi-Fi trying to watch the film Rush, which unfortunately wasn't available in my country. So I changed my location back here to home in the UK and I was able to watch the film with no problems. So if that sounds right up your alley, the lovely folk at Surfshock are offering you an 83% off plus three extra months for free if you use my promo code MattAmos. And there's a 30 day money back guarantee so you can try all of this out and if it's not for you, then there's no risk in cancelling. Make sure to click the link in the description below. But now we come on to the final assembly. First up is the chin straps. A fire resistant fabric is sewn onto a strip of yellow Kevlar material, then has soft foam added on the inside to make it more comfortable for the driver. Soft foam inserts are also made for inside the helmet which are covered with fireproof fabric which can be custom in a variety of colors. These are glued into the foam protection pieces we saw earlier and the grooves on this front piece are carved out so teams can add in radio communications. 
Once all the pieces of fabric are glued onto the hard foam, it's time to assemble the parts into the shell. The first being a small metal mesh being added to the air vents at the front of the shell. The surface is roughed up with a metal brush so that the glue can bind better with the surface. This section of the helmet is to allow airflow within the helmet and the mesh is to stop anything coming through. Next, a rubber seal is applied around the eye port of the shell to protect the user from any sharp edges and to make a tighter seal when the visor is down. The first bit of the foam protection to go inside is the top with a plastic liner wrapped around the foam. This is so that once inside the shell, the operator can hold onto the plastic liner and have better control on positioning it. And without it, the operator could accidentally take off any of the glue down fabric. When it's positioned correctly, the liner can then be cut off and removed. And it's a simple process of then adding in the remaining foam sections. The last small bits needed to be added are the bolts, washers, and the visor itself. The visors are molded to fit the curved dimensions and the operators make sure to sand down any rough sections to make it smooth and easily workable. Once finished, it's then quality control checking all aspects of the helmet are correct. Then it's a simple case of boxing it up and sending it off to the customer. Now one out of 100 helmets get quality controlled here through penetration tests or other tests laid out by the FIA. So here with the penetration test, this is four kilograms and is lifted up to about four meters and dropped directly on top of the helmet. Now I wanna say a massive thanks to Bell Racing Helmets for inviting me down here. We've been trying to do this for about three years now to show you the process of how it's done from start to finish. So a massive thanks to them. And I really hope you enjoyed watching this video as well. Please, if you haven't already, make sure you're subscribed and I'll see you next time.